May is National Stroke Awareness Month, and on average, one person in the U.S. dies from a stroke every four minutes. But up to 80% of strokes can be prevented. While most strokes occur in people 65 years or older, they can happen at any age. And if you're having symptoms, the main thing is get to the hospital as fast as you can. Dr. Larry Morgan is a stroke specialist with the Bronson Neuroscience Center and Neurocritical Care Unit at the Bronson Methodist Hospital in Kalamazoo. Dr. Morgan, good morning. Good morning, Tim. Thank you for having me. You know, we all think we know what a stroke is, but, you know, nuts and bolts, what happens? What is a stroke? Yeah, so there are two big classifications for stroke. Uh, The more common one is one in which a blood vessel becomes blocked and the blood flow is prevented to a portion of the brain, and this we classify as an ischemic stroke. The other type of stroke that can happen is one in which a blood vessel breaks open in the brain, and we classify this as a hemorrhagic stroke. Yeah, you know, the other day Ryan Seacrest was on a television program and people thought he was having a stroke. They thought he exhibited some of the symptoms. Turns out he said he was just really tired. But what are the signs and symptoms of a stroke? So there can be many signs and symptoms of a stroke. Though The most common ones are covered by an acronym that we use called FAST. Uh, and this can help uh, identify stroke symptoms for people. And it stands for facial drooping, arm weakness, speech changes, and the T stands for time because speed is extremely important when we're dealing with treating strokes. And you should call 911 immediately if you suspect that someone is having a stroke and get them to the hospital as quickly as possible. And then if it turns out they're not, well, still good because uh, there's no going back from some of these strokes. Absolutely. So what can we do to prevent stroke? What are some of the best things we can do? Many strokes can be prevented by working with your primary care doctor and carefully addressing the risk factors that you have to help manage most chronic diseases. There's no single medication or treatment that can prevent all strokes, and controlling these risk factors can be very complex and requires an evaluation of each individual's unique factors uh, to help to determine what the best strategy is to prevent strokes for you. So working with your primary care doctor is certainly the best way. Is this a hereditary thing? Does it run in families? It certainly can be. There are definitely components of it uh, that can make you more predisposed to having strokes um, than than other people. Um, a, a lot of it comes down to controlling whatever those risk factors that you have are. Sure. If you have a lot of obesity in the family, uh, ergo, it's going to be more of a risk? That's correct. Mm-hmm. And, and same goes with, with habits. I mean, you know, if everybody in your family smokes, well... That's another risk, isn't it? It absolutely is. And I know some of these things because, like you just alluded to, I've sat down with my doctor. We've evaluated everything. I've been on medication for blood pressure for many, many years now, and he's happy when I go there now. Yeah, and controlling those things are very, very important because they can lead to, to many complications, not just strokes, but other complications on down the road. We're talking with Dr. Larry Morgan from the Bronson Neuroscience Center. Uh, what about COVID-19 and strokes? Is there any kind of a link? If, uh, we've heard some stories to that effect. Have you seen any of that at Bronson? Yeah, that's a great question. So there's certainly been some reports of stroke uh, occurring associated with COVID-19, particularly in young individuals. And we have seen several cases of individuals who are young and don't have the typical risk factors that we see associated with strokes and have also tested positive for COVID-19. And so, um, you know, the reasons behind this are not entirely clear, but it's probably related to the body's response to the virus that causes COVID-19, resulting in an increased likelihood of developing blood clots in multiple areas of the body, including in the brain. You know, a lot of people, too, are, are sitting around inactive. They've, they're under a lot of stress. They're probably eating more than they should. The uh, COVID-19 situation probably put, I'm going to guess, I'm not a doctor, you're the doctor, that's why I'm asking, but are are we at a greater risk right now than we have been? Certainly, if people aren't minding, uh, you know, the risk factors that they have, that certainly is placing them at greater risk, of course, um, with COVID-19 causing uh, an increased risk in developing blood clots there. There is a a risk of, uh, you know, strokes associated with that as well. Um, You know, so we just want to remind people to be mindful of social distancing practices, you know, do things like washing your hands, avoid touching your face, cover your coughs and sneezes with your elbow, um, respect the stay-at-home orders that are issued by our public health officials, um, and just otherwise generally taking care of yourself. Where can someone go to learn more about uh, the stroke care that you have available at Bronson? If you want to learn more, the best place to go is bronsonhealth.com forward slash stroke. Ah, nice and simple to find, bronsonhealth.com forward slash stroke. 
Well, Dr. Larry Morgan, thanks for taking a few minutes out of your busy schedule to tell us about that today. Let's hope we prevent a few. Absolutely. Thank you for having me.